Shalom, we praise this to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, El-Shai, Ba'ashem, Ha'arakah, Kudash. Double winners on today, Apostles and Elders, a great most honorable well. And Shalom to the whole world. It's by all of the GMS London camp. It's the biblical commentary on the book of Luke, the second chapter, and it reads, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed, all right? So it shows you they had control over the um the world at the time, the Roman Empire. Okay, it escapes me at this moment what uh, Greek what what Greek was there for the world word world, all right. But reading on it says and this and this taxing was first made when Serenius uh was governor of, of Syria. Alright, so this is before Pilate Entered into the into the office, right? I believe I looked up his lifespan was of fifty one A D to about twenty one um, B C, right? So I'm not sure how long he held the office, but hey, the guys in history cemented the proof he lives. So for those people that say the Bible is fake, it's fictitious, and there's there's no real realness to it, do your googles, man. Right, verse three it says, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city, right, and Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, onto the city of David, right, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David. So when you got taxed, you had to actually your tax registration. I'm guessing, was in the city of your your birth or your lineage, right? So the city of his birth being Bethlehem because he's of the kinship, the lineage of David, he had to go pay his taxes there, right? So Reno says to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child, right? So his, his wife that was espoused unto him, engaged to be with, with him, and she was great with child, meaning she was close to bearing, all right, verse six, and so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. All right, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. All right, and this is um. And this is this is this is t this shows a lot because um. Him being, as it tells you in the book of, as it tells you in the book of Revelation, the fifth chapter, he's known as the, the Lamb of the Most High, right? So him being born in a manger, um, is telling because he was born around, you know, those animals. Basically, there was sheep there and whatnot, all right. So verse eight, it says, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field keeping watch over their flock by night, all right? So there were shepherds over there, you know, in the field, and they were watching over the f the flock. And when you look into the history, and you, you, you'll find that there wouldn't be no shepherds in the field during the winter time. okay? So we're on the way to Christmas right now, we're in November, early November, but Christmas is around the corner, and they usually say they celebrate something called Christmas, Right, which is not found in the Bible at all. Right, what's found in the the the, the greatest thief thief, Salakia, man, the greatest feast they found, the one of the greatest feast they found in the Bible was the Passover, in which the Lord was born, and it takes part, takes place two weeks after the New Year, which basically is in spring. Okay, because spring is the spring and forth of life. Right. And that's the fitting time for a new year to begin when new life begins, right? So the Lord was born then. He wasn't born dead in, in the winter, right? So anyway, reading on it says, um, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, See, every time they see, someone sees an angel in a the word, they're afraid, right? The power of an angel, their presence, their spirit, their energy, is high power, man. 
right? They stand before the Heavenly Father. And you know to stand before, to, to look into the face, not literally look in the face, but to be in the presence of the Heavenly Father. You have to have a great energy about you, all right? And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, all right? For unto you, you is born this day in the city of David a saviour, which is Hamashiach the Lord, all right? The anointed Lord, Yahweh Shai, okay? And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find a babe wrapped in a, in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of hev heavenly hosts praising the Lord and saying, Glory to Yahweh in the highest. And and on earth peace, goodwill toward men, right? Um, and it again, the Lord on the onset of His birth into this world was a big thing because His lifespan of thirty three years was basically for the sake of being a sacrifice, a ransom for the nation of Israel, for them to be adopted back onto the heavenly Father. So it makes sense that he came into the earth, on earth, with angels greeting him, and the same way he came onto the heavens after he, after his death, right when he slept, into the 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 heavens with the angels greeting him, right and reverencing him, all right. We're showing you as it speaks of in the Lord's prayer that um um our power. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven, basically, right? So it shows you that Yahweh Shai is, is the author of that, right? Bringing the glory to the um, the, the same glory to in, the, in the heavens on the, upon the earth, right? So anyway, reading on, it says, um, verse 15, it says, And it came to pass as the angels were gone away, from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. All right? And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds but mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart all right so a lot of people were speculating all right but they 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 weren't sure okay and even mary witnessing all that she met witness she pondered on them all right she was she was thinking upon them all right after seeing angels on on many occasions all right so read on, it says verse 20, And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising Yahweh for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Right? And when the eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Yahweh Shai. Right? So Yahweh Shai was circumcised because why? He, 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 he came to fulfill the law, all right? So, and that's why he was blameless, all right? So it says, in his name Yahweh Shai, I mean, he deliverer, all right? Which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Yeah, the first verse. And when the days, first chapter, should I say, the previous chapter, and when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, all right, and that that's proof that um, because when you go to Leviticus the second chapter, and I believe it's the twenty first verse, it basically speaks of that law, all right, and it speaks of if a, a woman bears a, a man child, I believe she's unclean for thirty three days, and if she bears a a woman child, she's unclean for sixty six. Sign around that number, okay, but you can read it, you can look it up. But the main reason why you know that she didn't have sex with an angel is because it tells you that that basically um, cons if you hold seed, basically, all right? 
So if you hold like can so, so it hold seed, what well, that that's literally what it is. But if a woman conceives seed, then she goes through this this um process of purification. All right. So that proves that she had the seed of man within her. All right, because man is the only thing that man would be the only one that possessed seed to put inside of her. All right, and I'd be Joseph. As we read before, he's of the house of David, all right? So that's how the seed of the, that's how Yahweh Shai's lineage w was so, okay? So reading on it says, um, um, verse 23, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord Yahweh and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of tail doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. All right. And the same man was just, and this, this just stirred my memory because the apostles, I believe it's this week, just gone. I was watching it and you had um, a man named Simeon. All right. And the name Simeon goes back to the Hebrew Shemai one, which means affliction heard. And the, the man, he was a, uh, sorry, he was a Simeonite, should I say. But he told a story about how he went before the judge and he prayed that the guy that was prosecuting him forget everything that he basically said. And then what happened, he basically said that it happened and it kind of made him so happy that it happened. And that's the fulfillment of his name. His affliction was heard of the Heavenly Father. So that was quite spiritual. But yeah, this just stirred my memory. So anyway, let me read it again. So it says, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was, was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. Okay, so he's waiting for the consolation of Israel. Right? And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord Yahweh, the Lord Hamashiach. All right. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought the child Yahweh Shai to do for him after the custom of the law, then took him up in his arms and blessed Yahweh and said, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, all right? And thou hast prepared before the face of all the people a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of the people of Israel, Isaiah the 11th chapter, okay? Because Yahweh Shai is a light unto the Gentiles to gather all, um, as, as a, for example, like a lighthouse on the coast for all the, the Gentiles that are lost at sea to basically come back a, a direction for them to see to a, a light for them to see in what direction they should go to to meet that light all right so anyway reading on it says and, he, and joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him all right because they're, they're thinking damn like everywhere we go our child is just being held in high regard people you know coming left right and center to come and see him and say great words of him Right, and he's, he's a newborn. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel. All right, and for a, a sign which shall be spoken against. Okay, so that's that's the purpose of Yahweh Shai being um being born because he only he's here for the elect. All right. He's on this side, right? But on the other side, it's for all Israel, right? So reading on, it says, Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the faults of many hearts may be revealed, all right? So even it's saying that even she's going to get cut by that same sword, right? But it says that the faults of many hearts may be revealed, showing you that the Heavenly, the heavenly Father had a special portion of Yahweh Shai, to bring those things to pass and there's many accounts of where he read the situation because he really he had that power man to read mind okay and decide for situations so verse 36 right and there was one anna a prophetess the daughter of uh 
Fanu, of Fanuel of the tribe of Asher. Okay, she was of a great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. Right, so it shows you there that you have the tribe of Asher that still remained within the nation of Israel, even though you had all the the, the Nova, most of the majority of the Nova Kingdom depart into the Americas, okay? So that shows you that you still have remnants over, you could even st still have them over there in the west coast of Africa, man. Tribes of Asher, Ephraim, uh, Neptali, etc., etc., all right? Verse 37, and she was a widow of about four score and four years, So she was 84 years old, which departed not from the temple, but served Yahweh with fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant, gave thanks likewise, on, likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. All right. So this is back to back now. When he's in the temple, mind you, right, showing you how great, of esteem he's being regarded of within the temple. And this is of a woman that's always set within the temple, fasting and her work speak for herself, all right? And when he had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, um, Yahweh, they returned into Galilee to their own city of Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit filled with wisdom and grace of Yahweh was and the grace of Yahweh was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year for the feast of the Passover. And when he was twelve years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Yahweh tarried behind in Jerusalem. Right? So this 12, why did it mention that he's 12 years old? Because when you're 12 years old and you hit the puberty, you hit puberty, you're a man, right? Around the age of 12, you hit puberty. That meant that he was a man, right? That was a distinct, he basically was a son of the covenant. He went through, he was basically under the covenant now. So in that being the fact that you're, you're a you're um, liable for being judged according to the law. You're now a man, okay? So it says, and when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Yahusha tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they supposing him to have been in the company went a day's journey and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance and when they found him not they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him and it came to pass that after three days they found him in the in the temple sitting in the midst of the doctors both hearing him and asking him questions and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers and when they saw him they were amazed and his mother said unto him son why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And went, and he went down with them. All right. Because what, what father was he speaking about? He's heavenly father, okay? Yahweh, the Most High, okay? And his father's business was for him to be, to follow every word of prophecy that was spoken of him in the book and to fulfill it, right? Ultimately, boiling down to the, 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 the time of, 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 um, of him being handed over to the Roman authorities, okay? through um, Judas Iscariot, okay, and the Sanhedrin, right, Pilate, and all would be put, being crucified and taken away, all, all the sin of Israel being placed upon him and being taken away for him to be made clean, for the nation to be made clean, all right, 
So um, it says in um, verse 50, And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. All right, so she she was my again, she was, she kept everything that was said in her mind. All right, so it was really messing with her. And Yahusha increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with Yahweh and man. All right, so with that, I pray you were edified. Say shalom.